Happy Sunday once again, Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel. Tennessee baseball makes it 15 in a row. They finish off the sweep of Illinois today, 8-3. to three. That's followed up by the annihilation yesterday, 24-1 to one of Illinois. So they finish off the sweep, make it 15 in a row. Now it's time. It is time. Of course, you've got your midweek game coming up against Eastern Kentucky. But next weekend, it is big boy baseball. It's SEC baseball time as Tennessee travels to Alabama. Cannot wait for that. But let's get right into this thing today. Tennessee takes it 8-3. to three. They get down 3 to nothing in this game. They got the home run from Hunter Inslee. Great to see. Great for him to get that home run today that um, made it 3-1. to one. And then Blake Burke gets a home run, gets tossed. Uh, there was a little bit of chirping going on today. I know at one, po uh, one point, Cal Stark and Illinois' catcher were kind of chirping when he came up to bat, and Stark was said something. Umpire kind of stepped in a little bit, so I'm not sure what was said. So um, I think it, it was probably, I don't know, a lead up to it anyway. But um, so Burt gets tossed. Uh, Kavaris Tears drives in the, I think it was the go-ahead run. It's a, it's a Curly had a sack fly. Excuse me. Was it Curly? It was Curly had the sack fly. And then uh, Tears drove in the win, uh, the run to make it four to three. And then you got later into the game, Tennessee loads the bases up. Robin Villeneuve with the grand slam makes it eight to three. And Tennessee never looked back today. So, you know, a lot of good things come out of today. Nate Sneed, man. How about Nate Sneed coming on? Aaron Combs started today. He went, let's see, let me go back to my pitch in there. He went three innings, three earned runs, four hits, two walks, two strikeouts. Um, man, so-so outing for him. Nate Sneed comes in, though, goes six innings, four hits, two walks, five strikeouts, no runs. Brings his uh, ERA on the year to 1.80. For strikeouts for him, he has 18 strikeouts in 20 innings. He's the funny thing about him. I thought he was going to be a big time strikeout pitcher, and he's striking guys out. Don't get me wrong, but it's not at that you know 13, 14 strikeouts per nine pace that he's on. Combs has 11 strikeouts in nine innings. His problem he had, he does have seven walks in those nine. Uh, he has nine and a third innings on the season. So. Tennessee got by with two two pitchers today, and I was encouraged this weekend too because yesterday in the twenty four to one game, where I did not uh, cover that one because I was occupied, obviously. But Tennessee's pitching yesterday one walk, and you had Beam who went five innings, five strikeouts, one walk. Then you had Dylan Lloyd, J.J. Garcia, Braden Sharp, Austin Hunley, four innings, eight strikeouts, no walks between those. That's impressive numbers. And that's pretty cool that they, you know, you take care of enough business, you can throw those young guys like that. It's um, it's a team that's coming together. The bullpen's still coming together. But this lineup, I saw, I saw yesterday um, Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball, who runs that. I like their content. I like what they do. But he said, um, I think he said that A&M and Tennessee and LSU were the three best lineups he has seen so far. Um, I may be taking that out of context a little bit on it. I don't, I'm not quoting him I'm going on what he's saying, but the th that's basically your three best lineups he's seen. He said he likes Tennessee. Their starting pitching has been solid and he complimented their bullpen. I mean, I think their bullpen has been decent to me. The biggest thing is the walks that comes into it. But a lot of that's been your younger guys too. Combs has had a little bit of walk issues. I think that's been his issue. It's gotten him into a lot of trouble this year. But other than that, Snead's been pretty good. Um, he's kind of in that role I expect with him. With him throwing as hard as he does, he throws a lot of off-speed stuff, which kind of surprises me with him. But, um, yeah, but uh, again, it, with college baseball players, if you just throw them fastballs down the middle, they're going to light you up. You may get it by them a little bit, but if you don't have numerous pitches, you're going to get lit up. It happens in high school. I saw it last year, a kid we had. He's now uh, College of Charleston. He was throwing mid nineties. He threw it down the middle. These high school kids, they light him up. You got to have control. You got to have secondary pitches to be able to get by in the game of baseball. If you don't, guys can hit a fastball. If it's straight, they'll learn how to hit it. 
You make no mistake about it, especially at this level, especially when you're playing better teams. But I liked what I've seen out of the pitching this weekend with Causey Friday night. Causey's made a – Tony Vitello has a lot of options he can go with. It's going to be really fascinating to see what he goes with. The one thing, you know, Drew Beam's going to start. He's solid. He's going to he's going to give you solid outings. I think if there's no other issues with A.J. Russell, he's going to be right back in the rotation, probably that Friday night guy again. But, man, Causey and Sneed, they have looked like really good pickups. So far, Stamos comes in. He was warming up. He didn't come in. He's looked like a pretty good addition into the bullpen as well. I'm starting to think when it's all said and done, I'm starting to think that the closer is going to be Marcus Phillips. I could be wrong on that. I know he came in and closed, what was it, Friday? I believe it was. But, um, and possibly Wednesday. I'm trying to think on that game. I was more into the basketball game. I was that night, but I think when it comes down to it, you're going to see Phillips and possibly Snead. I, they may go comb some. I think that was the initial thought based on just reading between the lines of Tony Vitello's comments. But now Combs has make, made a couple of starts. And, um, you know, we'll kind of see where they go with that moving forward. But I, I thought all along, I thought Snead in that kind of Chase Burns esque type role made sense. He played it today, he came in, gave him six strong innings. Uh, you know, good for him. Marcus Phillips, I think, if they need a guy late, he's going to be in there as well. I'm still looking for that lefty options. at Stamos possibly. I mean, uh, that's the same with Kirby Canales talking to a buddy of mine yesterday. Kirby Canales not around because he throws in the high 90s. Kirby Canales around because he has multiple pitches. He has good control. He normally comes in and gets the job done. He did have a little bit of a struggle in and out. I guess it was Friday night. But uh, overall, the guy sticks around because he has good control, he has good location, and he's he's not just throwing 86 mile per hour fastballs. He has a lot of movement on, you know, with his fastball, with his curve. He has a great curveball stuff. So, you know, you can throw as hard as you want to, but if you can't throw strikes, it doesn't matter. If your only fastball way to get it across is throw it right down the middle, you're not going to make it in the SEC. You're just not. You'll be transferring out and going somewhere else at that point. Uh, Tennessee's bats today, I mean, took a little bit to get going, but they got going again. That's all that matters. 15 in a row for this program. They look really good right now. They look really good all the way around. Moore was 0 for 5. Burke, 1 for 2. He had a home run to walk. He was tossed. Uh, not sure what was said. Dalton Bargo come in, got another walk in his bat and a run. Uh, to Billy Amick, 1 for 2. With a double, two walks, a run. Billy Amick's got the best walk up there is with him playing uh, the stroke, Billy Squire the stroke, and everybody clapping. It's awesome. My wife laughed because he came up, and I just kind of looked up the screen, and I must have been smirking about it. She said, every time he comes up, you're smirking. When it, it, it's just hilarious to me, but it's awesome, too. Uh, Kavaris cheers, one for three, one RBI, a double, a walk, two runs. Illinois had a lot of walks today. I think I saw they had eight walks. Dylan Dryling, one for three. He had a walk. He had a run score. Villeneuve, one for three with the grand slam. He had a walk. Curly, 0 for two. He did have a sack fly. He did have an RBI. Reese Chapman was 0 for one. Got to think Reese Chapman may have gotten pulled because he uh, he kind of he made a play. I can't remember what inning. It was earlier in the game, and he kind of lobbed it in, and the dude took advantage of it at third base and went in and scored. But, uh, you know, good for Reese Chapman yesterday. He had a good day swinging the bat and he needed it brought his average up about 150 points yesterday but uh you know he didn't do him himself any favors today when he lobbed that one in and then hunter insley come in one for two hunter insley had a home run to walk today good for him man we need these guys swinging good bats we really do cal stark was 0 for one from with a walk and then cannon peebles come in later he was 0 for two Today, looking at averages on the year, you're looking at Moore 365, Burke 371, Bargo 367. Ethan Payne come in at one point. He's at 500. Amick 365, Tears 404, Dryling 365, Villeneuve 364, Curley 306, Chapman 250, Inslee 244, Stark 176, Peebles 318. Ladies and gentlemen, that is an offense that is clicking. We're going to see how they do when they get into SC play, but that's some impressive numbers that they have going right now. And I'm really excited to see them go down to Alabama next weekend. It's going to be a good baseball team that they're playing. 
Um, Normie gets a little chippy in SEC play. That's um, that's one of the big boys. Kind of like the old WCW wrestling days where the big boys play. That's what it is with uh, SEC baseball, the best conference in America. And make no mistake about the ACC is very good. The ACC is not the SEC, though. It just isn't. And um, go looking at moving forward. So I talked about Sneed, the snat, the snats, the stats. Uh, it does get real now. Eastern Kentucky, Tuesday night, and then it's Alabama next weekend. They have another midweek game. Then Ole Miss comes into Knoxville two weekends from now as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, right now, no live shows for the foreseeable for baseball. Uh, basketball, we're going live the rest of the season after every game, going live after every basketball game. So hopefully that will ride us for a while on that. Uh, Friday, the Vols play at 1 p.m. against uh, the winner, Mississippi State and LSU. So around 3, 3.30, I'll be going live with that. Hopefully they make it into Saturday on into Sunday as they go for that number one seed leading up to March Madness in the NCAA tournament. But thank you guys for tuning in with me. I hope you enjoyed your Sunday. My name is Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange. The Vols make it 15 in a row. Sweep, sweep again. As always, go Vols. <laughs>